going? Today I'm going to be talking to you guys about refactoring our code. Now what do I mean by refactoring our code? Well, it's a process that uh, we need to do to keep our code clean. Sometimes when we're coding and we're figuring things out, having the cleanest code is not always ideal because you know, you're just figuring things out. You're going to make a lot of mistakes. There's going to be a lot of changes. So you want it to get it actually working first before you actually think about cleaning things up. Now, ideally we would also write tests. Now I'm going to cover that in a different episode. In this episode right here, what we're going to be taking a look at is how we can transform uh, existing code that we got to work from the previous Elasticsearch episode into keeping it all clean and uh, manageable uh, for future modifications. Let's take a look. So over here, uh, I've got um, the existing code open up here on GitHub. And as you can see here, the search query is uh, quite big. I mean, there's a lot going on here. We're doing a query, we're doing filter, we're doing uh, aggregates. So, you know, quite a lot going on over here. And so what we're going to be taking a look at is converting this over here uh, and separating it out into a separate module or separate class even. Uh, in this case, we're going to be using modules uh, in Ruby to, to clean all that up. So um, let me show you what it's going to look like. And I'm going to go through the process of explaining to you how I extracted each part of the code and how I made it all fit. So I'm going to switch over to my sublime text over here. Uh, and as you can see here, this is the new code. Uh, this is the converted code, the cleaned up code. And uh, what we have here is something very compact. Uh, it's just the custom search here and it's got this query here and it's uh, you know having uh, the builder that builds a query in a separate uh, module. So here we're using uh, movies query uh, dot build and I'm passing the keyword here into the module and then it's doing the process of uh, building that query for us. And for the aggregates, uh, again, we have a sub module uh, that does that for us and uh, the same for the filters. Now, this is what we get uh, once we've refactored the code. Let's actually take a look at what's happening behind the scenes of this module here. So I'm going to go over here to my code. I'm going to click on the movies query. And as you can see, they're all just, um, you know, just methods here. Uh, but basically, all I did was I uh, moved uh, this part out and, you know, renamed the method and just structured it a little bit differently. But the actual code is the same. Now, uh, take a look over here. It's exactly the same, right? I haven't changed anything. So why you would want to do this is, well, the reason is because you have to keep your code clean. So if this query needs to grow in complexity, it's got its own little isolate, um, isolate uh, area where it can just grow, right? Uh, so we can add more clauses to it. We can add more complex aggregates. We can add more complex filters and everything is just kind of like in its own little corner. Uh, in its own little box, if you will. And it's much easier to manage and uh, to clean up. Let's move on. So, so this is actually the main query here. Uh, and then we have the aggregate down here. So this is uh, the aggregate becomes a sub module of the movies query. Uh, we can also uh, uh, separate this into a separate file. So for example, if the aggregate does grow larger than what it is, we can uh, actually separate this into a separate file. Uh, and uh, this is just basic Ruby. So here we have the build aggregate and the build aggregate calls the generate aggregation for. So down here we have that method generate aggregation for. And uh, so that does the aggregate for us. Now the next part, the filter, same story. So all we did was separate it in a separate module and uh, keep things very clean. And we have uh, you know methods in here that we call inside the build method. Uh, so as you can see, I'm using the build method, uh, you know, just because it reads very nicely over here. So like movies query build and use these keywords. So we're building the query here. Um, then I've got the aggregate and then I'm building the aggregate. Then I've got the filter, then I'm building the filter. So um, we can actually, you know, clean this up a little bit further. So for example, we have movies query and we can even do like a subsection of query. Uh, dot build, but I think that you know this much uh, separation is enough for us, and uh, this works and it's clean enough for me. We can also may actually make this object oriented, 
But I think for this case, uh, using modules work perfectly fine. So I also want to mention that over here, I'm kind of created my own folder here for putting the movies query. And uh, so when we add our own folder here for the movies query, we need to be sure to uh, configure something in application.rb, which is we need to auto load the queries path. And as, as you can see here, you know, we talked about presenter in previous episodes. I've also got this for presenters. So I'm just coming out with my own patterns here, my own, you know, design patterns uh, based on the needs of my code. Uh, so yeah, just be wary of that. If you create your own, you know, like in Rails, it comes with models, controllers, and views. I'm now creating my own. So I have queries, for example, uh, as, a, as a pattern that I would use in this application. And uh, you can apply this to many other things too. Like if your code has certain specific patterns that start popping up, you can just use this technique and create your own folder and call it, you know, call the thing whatever you want. Uh, it can be queries, presenters, and decorators, uh, whatever it may be. That about wraps it up for this episode. And in the next episode, I'm going to be talking about something way, way cool. Uh, we're going to be talking about keyword intelligence and how, uh, you know, when the user types in the keyword for search, how we can separate that and then figure out what context each of those keywords have. So with that, we're going to wrap it up and I will see you guys in the next episode. Thank you for watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video.